Hello everyone, another two weeks have passed, so welcome to another episode of Narus Corner. And this week we are going to take a look at creating some scoreboards for our games. I know that normally you can display scoreboard on some custom UI, but I find that sometimes, you know, displaying this stuff in a real world can just add some little something to your game. And as you can see, as I shoot the target, my score gets higher and the players are sorted. These are our helpful players, Steve the Dummy and Wooden Jack. And you can of course bind it to any sort of score that you like. But yeah, let's just jump back into the editor and take a look at it. Okay, here we are, back at the editor. And as you can see, I've already prepared something that we will be using. Of course, that to display the scores and names on the board, we will be using these stone letters, but we are not gonna be, you know, creating some, uh, you know what I wanna say, templates from them, because I have chosen the way to cr create a, sorry, there's a lot of M's in this, to create um, an array where we declare with entity class the letter and the corresponding class for it, and I'll, I'll get to it later. But first we will prepare this, this board that we will be showing it on. And how we're gonna do this is just placing some blocks. I've chosen a plastic block colored black. And these blocks will also serve as positions for spawning individual letters. So first block will have the first letter, second block, the second one and so on and so on. So first we place, I'm gonna show you like this with a different block, damn it, blocks, great, this one is nice. So first you're gonna place a row of blocks, then you're gonna add a label, I'm sorry, I'm just gonna turn down my phone, nice, yeah, so an entity label, then you have to select the blocks one after another to make sure that they are sorted correctly because if you didn't do this uh, the blocks may be in a different order and then you'd end up with random letters, you know, not great. So yeah, you, you select them one after another, then click add label and now this label contains all the blocks one after another sorted. Then you can just select all of these and duplicate, duplicate it upwards, upwards, and so on and so on. Of course, I've added some spaces between them just because the bl the letters are just as big as the blocks. So if you don't don't give it some space, you will have them smashed together, and it doesn't really look good. So you know this is just aesthetics, and you can play with it all you want. But once you're done, you're gonna add a game logic label, and uh, once again, you're gonna select all of these labels one after another because you wanna display the names from top to the bottom. So you're gonna press select game logic label, right? So now we have two layers, right? We have the first layer, which is the rows. You, you might call them the rows of the board, which will be one row for one name and score. And second one, which is the entity label itself, and this for columns, because you can select individual blocks, the first one, the second one, and so on. And I have split this up actually into two sections, because you can see that the last three blocks will be for displaying our scores. You could you could of course display it after the name in the same uh, in the same row, but I think this is like this is nicer in a way that you have more control over it if you wanna change something because we are gonna have two different uh, instructions for displaying the name and displaying the score. So if you wanna make some changes to the color of the score itself or something, it's way easier to change it like that. 
So uh, it, it's just the same process all over again. You just place three blocks at the end of the row, duplicate them with the label selected and add another GameLogic label which will correspond to all of those. All right, I'll delete what I've just created because we are gonna use those that I've already created before. And one other thing that you need to set up is some label which will have all our players. Uh, you can of course use some, you know, like a player role or player team, but uh, for this uh, for this demonstration, I'm, I'm gonna use label because I want to use these dummies as players and that wouldn't work with the role, but there is very little change to the code if you wanted to change it, so I'm sure you can manage that. All right, let's jump into the scripting part of this. All right, just had to restart the game, I'm sorry. And as you can see, the script is already done, of course, but we are gonna do that again and gonna go through that step after step just so you can follow along. But I am actually gonna keep it there just to, you know, help myself remember what I have created actually. Okay, so the first, uh, the first, um, the first instruction that we're gonna need is actually define new letter and this is gonna be an instruction that we're gonna call each time that we gonna we're, we wanna create a new definition for a letter because in our um, uh, in our variable array that we're gonna create just now I'm gonna call it alphabet 2 because I already have the first one so in our alphabet 2, it's actually going to be a multidimensional array. And that means that each segment of the array is going to contain three separate segments as well. Right? You, it's very easy once I explain it more. So what we're going to pass when we're defining a new letter, we're going to pass lowercase, then uppercase, and then the class for the stone uh, for the stone letter right so what you're gonna do you always create some helper local array that is gonna be a new letter and you are gonna push into the array like so into the new letter and you're gonna push three uh, three things right first it's gonna be lowercase then uppercase and then the class itself and in the end you are gonna need a push array but this one it's a, you can notice that you can push an array into an array and that means that it's gonna push all this new letter but into the in, into one uh, one object slot right so if I, if I then call that I want to get array alphabet two index zero, it's actually going to contain all these three things for the zero, right? If I create, I'm, I'm just going to demonstrate on first one, because next we are going to create define alphabet, right? And in define alphabet, you are going to have to go through all the letters and actually write them out. So we have here and you are gonna need string for lowercase, for uppercase and for class, we are gonna need this. You can see this, uh, this tile that lets you select a entity type that should be spawned. We're gonna be passing that to a spawn instruction later. So we are gonna create A, right? So lowercase A, uppercase A, and you are gonna find letter A, right? And you're gonna go through all the letters like so. And the reason that we are cre we are defining lower and uppercase uh, letters is that as of now, you actually there is actually a difference when you are comparing strings. If, if you're comparing lowercase a and um, uppercase a, it won't it will return false. 
you know so if I if you have uh, some upper cases in your name then it would never work right for example I have Naruto human Nick and if I tried to uh, write it out just with lower cases it would just return Aro e woman right <laughs> so yeah that, that's why we have to do this uh, do it this way but in the future that there, there will actually be a change to editor where you can uh, search with up uh, without the difference between lower cases and upper cases right but for now yeah this is this is the way to, to go it's gonna take a bit of time as you can see this just but but it's not that bad and with the same system you are gonna create defined numbers as well so you can actually copy this define new number and you're just gonna delete the uppercase change lowercase to number and this is only gonna have a number and clause and we're gonna create a new array that's gonna be called numbers I oh I do have numbers already I'm just gonna call it numbers too I'm, I'm beginning to realize that this is gonna be more complicated with leaving the old script inside but yeah for now let's hope it's gonna work so yeah see define new number and you, just, you can change this but it's not important number just for the sake of you know right and in the same way we are gonna define numbers and you're gonna call this define new number instruction as well I don't know where it is there it is cool 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 and you're just gonna pass a number and also a class where you find the number number zero then there would be one number 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 one yep, and so on and so on once you define all these as you can see I'm just gonna use these because that would so it takes so much time to define this again you have to make sure that you actually uh, call these these instructions define alphabet and define numbers you have to call these from start because otherwise it won't get called so you will never create those uh, those arrays right and you could you couldn't use them so next step is definitely calling them just so they get uh, they get called at the start of the game and it's it, it creates for you that um, vocabulary that you can use right so afterwards what I have here is update board uh, instruction that is uh, just a way for me to update the board every time the score changes and of course at the beginning of the game it's called as well to just write out all the names with the scores and yes so what we're gonna need when we're uh, when we want to draw the board right I would start by creating the a script for a single name and then we can use the uh, update board to write out all, all of them right so first we are gonna create a print out the name instruction right and what you're gonna pass is a player because once we call the update board we are gonna go through all the players, sort them, and then call this print out the name for each and every one of them, right? So we need player. Then we are gonna need a row. That means that um, because uh, once you sort them, right, there is gonna be first player, second player, third player, and so on. So we wanna pass the row in which this player is gonna get uh, written out. And we are gonna start by getting the name of the player because uh, we need this as a string right so get name player and this is gonna be a name string so uh, as I've told you before we need to go uh, through this one character after another right so 
we already know that we are gonna have to use some loop and we are gonna use while because uh, the way we're gonna do this is that we are always gonna take the first character call an, another instruction for spawning the letter itself and then we are gonna cut the first character out and we are gonna do this while there are some letters left to do this for, right? So while and there is gonna be while this name string is not equal to an empty string, like so. So while there is still something in there, do this, right? You are gonna take a character at source position zero from the name string, which for my name is gonna be N. And then we are gonna set the name string to a substring. Substring start index one. So if I did it bef uh, without this, this would just go through all the characters and just chop them off one after another, right? But we want to use this character and we are going to use this. Um, sorry. <laughs> we are going to uh, use this in another instruction. As I told you, that is going to be for find and spawn the letter, right? And this is gonna take in a character which we, we're gonna be passing from find and spawn the character. And it's gonna be this character that we're passing, the name string. And yes. So what we're gonna do in this function, we are gonna use a loop and we're gonna use a for each loop and now watch out, you actually have to use this one uh, which has an array in the item. You, you can see that this is gonna be a letter and as you can see this itself is array as well because we have the multi-dimensional array which contains the three uh, three things, right? The lowercase, uppercase, and the class. And inside, we are gonna say if the letter index zero, which is lowercase, equals the character. Oh yeah, sorry, it, it, I didn't pass in the array. This is gonna be the alphabet. This is the one that I've already created. So for each letter in alphabet, if uh, the lowercase equals the character and now or because we can have uppercase as well. So just copy this. And so or the uppercase equals their character because it's the same letter, right? So if lowercase or uppercase equals the character that we're looking for, then we are gonna spawn the um, the entity, right? Because we we know that we have the right uh, the right character, so we can spawn the character once I find the correct this one. We're gonna uh, plug it in in a second, but instead of the entity definition, we're gonna place in this get array and we're gonna get the second one the, well it's the third one with the index 2 which is the the class right this is uh, this is 0 1 this is the second one 0 1 2 sorry not the second one uh, right as a position we are gonna need to be passing it so we are gonna call it what a column Oh, sorry, we're going to pass in row because we are going to need to be passing it all to there. And, hey, no, wait, 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 we don't need that. We are going to pass in a um, spawn point, which is going to be a spawn point for the letter, right? 
it's going to be spawn block. And this is going to be a transform, transform position for this spawn point. This is going to be the block in on the board, always uh, the next one, right? And we're going to put in a little offset just so it doesn't spawn inside. So 0 0.1. I'm gonna rotate it. This is you. You could just take a rotation, uh, get a rotation of the spawn point. I just know that mine is rotated 180 degrees to be uh, to be facing correctly. And yeah, the reason why I chose this uh, tile which plugs into something is that we wanna push this uh, new letter into a variable. Which is which I've already created here. This is a scoreboard letters, and we're gonna uh, we're gonna push every new letter and number into this, because every time you update the board, you wanna delete the old one, right? Because you you don't wanna print the letters all over each other again and again, because then it would create just a huge mess and unreadable something. So we are gonna use push again. Push, 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 push array, scoreboard letters, and spawn entity, right? So this is gonna be this is gonna push the array scoreboard with this uh, with this letter that's gonna get spawned, right? On the place that we have we have passed here, or we are gonna pass here. And yes, so printing out the name. Now we have the string, and we need a way to tell it which which uh, spot it is right because we don't um, this while doesn't remember how many times it went through the uh, went through the loop so we are going to create a new uh, local variable that is going to be called well we can call it just a counter and this counter is going to add one each time that it goes through the loop so we we know that uh, as you can see that uh, at this point where we are calling the find and spawn letter uh, it's still the zero right so it means that we can get the uh, first one the zero uh, zero position which is the first position I'm sorry the first position here then it's gonna increase by one and it's gonna call be, be called with this place that's gonna be called again with this place and so on and so on so where do I have it? I've broken that already. Oh, never mind. So uh, we need to pass in the block itself, not the counter. And the way we're gonna do it is to get array, of course. Once, once I find it, to get array, and I think we're gonna need get uh, this get array that plugs in as um, array as well because we have the multi-dimensional array. Uh, with get entities as well, right? Because you are gonna need get entities, and now uh, get low, uh, get logic. Oh, logic, logic objects. Yes, I'm, I I always forget this second one because uh, you need to use get logic object since we have a uh, game logic label here. So we, you, you're gonna use get logic objects on this one, and once you get that, it's all of these, right? And from that, from that single label, you are gonna use get entity, which is gonna be this. I hope it all makes sense. But yeah, so we already know which row it is. This is what we're gonna pass one level up, which are which we're gonna create um, just a in just a moment so we are gonna start by get logic objects because we first get uh, first we need to get the row so get array oh yeah we're not gonna use this one I've created such a word salad from from this part from this small part I, I don't even know how it's possible so once again what you're gonna do is you're gonna use get logic objects from the game logic label to determine the which entity label you're gonna use based on this row 
that we're going to be passing, right? So get array, game logic object, row. And now you're going to plug it in, get entities, entity label, because what this returns is, of course, one single entity label for uh, one specific row. And here you are going to use this counter that is uh, used as a determining the position of the current letter, right? And this you will plug into spawn point because this will return the one block that we are currently on. Right, so if we try this out, just if it's working, we can we can actually just temporarily replace this get name with some something like Oh, okay, we're just gonna write Naru the human, right? My nickname, and we are gonna call this instruction alone, which means we are not gonna uh, loop through anything so far, we're just gonna test it out. We're gonna call this, and we're gonna call z uh, row zero, and we will see if it prints out correctly, right? So we are going to go to the game start and after some delay, just to make sure that everything gets set up correctly first, we are going to call print out the name player. We don't need actually to call that. And I am just going to say it's going to be row two, which is going to be actually row three because it goes from zero, right? So if this is correct, if this is written correctly, it should write out the name Naruto the human on the third row. So let's just test this and we will see. All right, as you can see, it wrote out the name correctly. And yeah, that's that's great first step. And actually this is the most work that we're gonna do because there is not much anything else that needs to be done. And yeah, so let's hop back into the editor and we're gonna plug in the loop for uh, going through all the players, right? So uh, we have the uh, label player that already contains a player, which you can see in the spawn point. I have this attach label player and there is also an add storage instruction, which adds the this player storage. And the only thing I have created here is a variable for score. And I've set it to zero here, which is not necessary, but hey, why not? So on create, we set the storage owner. Ah, you know what? We don't need that. I'm just going to delete that because it should be zero by default, I hope. I'm just going to sh sorry, show this. Uh, yes, and it's going to be a zero default, yes. So, there is also the Steve the Dummy and the Wooden Check, the, our two fake players, and each of them has a add storage for this. This represents the, the, the dummy itself. And we are going to set his score to, let's say, three, and... For Steve, Steve is gonna have a score of yeah one. Why not? So at the start of the game, there should be Steve with a score one, uh, Wooden Jack with the score of three, and me with the score of zero. Right? Uh, uh, both of them, of course, have the label as well. Right? And the way to increase the score I have in this archery target, as you can see that on damage received, anytime I punch or shoot into it, uh, I call set player storage for trigger entity, which is the entity that dealt the damage. And I increase the score by one, right? And afterwards I call update board once again, which as you can see, because we can already jump to creating this, it will go through all the letters, delete them, and then 
goes through all the players and we are gonna create that now actually so let's move to our new code here we're gonna plug in the name again and we are gonna create a new uh, let's call it just update okay which is going to be super confusing if you have more updates in the game, but I'm sure that you are going to be smarter and name it something else. Okay, so in the update, what we got, what we want to do? We, as I've said, want to delete all the letters that we already have, right? Because it's going to get called repeatedly. So first, we are going to we're just going to check for each item in array, and that is the array that we are pushing everything into scoreboard letters. And we are gonna call this spawn, right? This spawn for this item, which is gonna be a letter. It, it's numbers as well, but hey, who cares, right? So, uh, in case that this uh, array is empty, it's not gonna do anything. But in case we already have something written out on the board, it's just gonna get deleted, right? Now we wanna define some new local variable which is going to be row that we have to pass in the pass inside here in the print of the name right we have the row so this is going to take care of it and each time we call the update uh, it's going to set itself by default to zero so we know that we are always going to go from the top so we have defined this then we need another variable and this time it's going to be an array and this is going to be copy of our players copy of players because uh, what we are going to do we are going to get all the entities which are going to be players from the entity label right and we need a copy because we want to sort it based on the score and we have a nifty little instruction for that you can see sort array it's super easy with this because you just pass in copy of players and now you define how you want to sort it right so uh, i want to go from highest score to the lower to, to the lowest and how i do this is that i say that i will get the score and you can see this compare instruction has object A and object B. This is, the, it will go through all the objects and compare them uh, one against each, uh, one against another. And you have to define how you want to compare them. And in this case, I want to use the score. So for object A in, and for object B, I'm going to go for get score. And I'm going to say that object B minus object A, right? Minus the score. And this, with the minus, will sort them from highest score to the, lo to the lowest one. If I did this uh, in the opposite way, it would sort them from the lowest number to the highest. And this, of course, uh, you can always use different ways of sorting it, but this is the only one we're going to need today. So once I've sorted all the players, this copy of players is actually sorted based on the score so i don't have to check the score again because i know how it goes one after another so i am gonna use a loop and i'm gonna call for each as well for each item which is gonna be a player in this case we are gonna call that instruction to print out the name right so print out the name player and row will be this and after each call of the player I want to increase the number for row by one because we don't want to write it on the same row you know over and over again that would be dumb so yeah we print out the number well we print out the name jump to another row with another player and so on and so on so uh, I'm thinking that this should be it, right? Am I forgetting something? 
we setting the row I'm sorry I'm just gonna check my original one but yeah and of course now we wanna what we're gonna do because this is gonna print out the names and now we are gonna jump to printing out the score because you don't want to have just list of the players even though you can use it like if you have some game hub or something and you want to display all the players on the server you know right in the entry room this this could be it for you you can just end the video and just use this one but we want to print out the scores as well and it's going to be really basically the same for printing the name as well as printing the names right um so we can actually use this as our base, the finance spawn letter, letter, and we are just gonna rename it to the number. And we are gonna use character and spawn point as well, but we're gonna rename character to number just to. You no, know, you don't have to rename these, you can just leave base names, but I like to know that you are gonna be able to orient in that at least better than I am so for each number in array and we have uh, an array of numbers we have created before and this contains numbers from 0 to 9 right and uh, this is a difference to the definition of numbers because we only have two segments in each um, in each number right we have only the number itself and the class so for this we are gonna be calling we are gonna be asking that if get array index 0 because this is the number equals the number that we are looking for then we are gonna spawn and this is gonna be an index 0 uh, index 1 because that is the class in this case right and transform position spawn point that remains the same the only thing that is going to change is that there is going to be a different spawn point from a different label and that is going to be from this we are going to copy this instruction print out the name and we're going to rename it to print out score it's very easy if you have something that is similar one to another just to copy it and change a few things instead of you know writing the writing them all over again so this is gonna be a number and we are gonna uh, we are gonna need to get the number right to get the score so player storage get score and we are gonna get score of the player now important thing if you are doing this if you're creating the display of the scores you can't simply take a score of let's say 126 and just ask uh, as, he, as we have done with the string right although I suppose you could do that you could convert it to the string but yeah no no that's not what we're gonna be doing today we are gonna do the slightly more mathematical way but it's very simple I promise so uh, what we're gonna do we are gonna be supporting only numbers to 999 right because if you want you can use more slots but we only have three slots anyway so this is the maximum that we can display so the way to get to the uh, numbers because you have to you have to take the number and you have to from one to, from 126 you need to get three numbers one two and six not not 120 and six but one two six and we are gonna use a very great thing to this and this is a modular I hope I'm you know pronouncing it correctly but modulo it modulo, modulo, it's just everything sounds weird so mod from now on so yeah Anyway, we're gonna use mod for this, and this uh, what what this does is that it returns you the remainder after division, right? If I divide 200, uh, 126 by 100, it's gonna do the division, which is uh, which is gonna be one point something, right? But it is gonna do the division by the whole numbers, and then it's gonna 
give you the reminder which is going to be 26. So we are going to take, uh, we are going to go through all the three numbers one after another, right? Now we want the hundreds, which is going to be the one in 126 example. So we are going to take the score. This is going to be score and not number because I'm getting lost by seeing number. So score mod 1000. Am I saying it right? Yes. Mod 1000. And this is. Wait, I don't have to do this. Never mind. Uh, this is just. You don't have to do this, right? That, like, so you can just take the score. It's the same. But I just find this is. I can see more like this. And it just makes more sense when I see it like this. So. I'm gonna need another instruction. I'm just gonna delete it. I'm just stupid. Because it's the same, right? Mod 1000 would return 126 or 500 and blah blah blah. So I'm just gonna, uh, for this, it's gonna be the whole score minus, and this is gonna be a score mod 10. Because, uh, no score mod 100 right yeah what this is gonna do is it's gonna take score 126 minus and mod uh mod score 126 by 100 is 26 so this is gonna return 100 and now i am gonna subtract no divide it sorry divide it by 100 and that means that we are going to get 1, right? So score 126 minus this 26 from mod is 100 divided by 100 is 1. If we had a number 257, this mod would, would return 57 because, you know, after dividing by 100, the mod modulo is 56, right? So. 256 minus 56 would be 200 divided by 100 is 2. So this is how you get a number 400. Then we are going to need another one for tens. And for tens it's going to be easy as well because you are going to take a modulo of 100. Yes, uh, mod modulo 100 which is going to be uh, from 126, it's going to be 26, right? Minus modulo 10, because m modulo 10 is going to return only the 6. So this is going to be 26 minus 6. It's going to be uh, 20 and divided by 10 to get the 2, right? And for the third one, we are only going to use score modulo 10 which is going to be the 6 right yes so this is the three numbers and we just need to call this find and spawn the number for each one of them right so we are going to use this uh, where do we have it find and spawn the number i'm just going to move this down we're going to copy it three times and for numbers, we are going to place this like so, right? And for spawn point, we are going to need... Oh, I, I'm, as I'm seeing this, I really hope I did it correctly. But yeah, hopefully. For spawn point, the same way as we've had um, uh, with the letter, we are going to need this get array. Oh, sorry. This get array, but the only thing I'm, we're going to change is this game logic label because this time we are going to going for this game logic label 2 which serves for the for the numbers right for the score so we're just going to copy it here and the counter is hopefully going to be replaced with this counter but just to make sure I'm just going to no, we, you know what, we don't need the counter because, um, yeah, sorry, just so you know what I'm talking about. Uh, in this, um, 
in this one we know that hundreds it's is uh hundreds are gonna be on the first place tens are gonna be on the second place and on the third place there is gonna be the on the third place there are gonna be the ones right so for roll that will remain the same but for the counter we are actually gonna plug in a simple numbers because it's always going to be the same. So this is going to be zero. The tens are going to be one, and ones are going to be two, right? So print out the score. Everything's the same. And here, wait, where are we? I am getting so lost in this. Oh yeah, here in in update, we want to call the print out the score as well, and it's going to have player and row as well right so I hope I'm not forgetting anything this should be it so just to go through this again for printing out the score you are gonna go here first it's gonna call print out the score for new for a player which is gonna be me in this case and row which is gonna be zero right I'm gonna be the first one so it's gonna get the score and then it's gonna use this uh, this system of counting with the modulo to determine individual numbers of the score if this is if the score is below 100 if it's only like 7 it's just gonna go uh, if it, this is just gonna get return 0 right this is gonna return 0 as well but this modulo of 10 will return the 7 so it's gonna get printed out and Every time this find and spawn the number is called, it is gonna pass in the number that it's calculated from the score. And it is gonna pass in the block on which it should be spawned. And right here, it is gonna take the number and it's gonna compare it to the first, uh, to the first, uh, first place, sorry. I really need to find a better way to say this. Uh, to the first, uh, place in the numbers array because the numbers array as I as we've talked about here is composed of the definition of the number uh, number itself and the class which is gonna get spawned so it is gonna compare it where do I have it it's gonna and it's gonna compare it's, uh, is a zero equal to seven no it's one equal to seven no two equal to seven no when it goes to all the way to seven it is going to say number seven is actually equal to seven so we are going to spawn the get array index one which is the class we're going to spawn the, um, this uh, number this stone stone number on the position of the spawn point which is the block and then actually I'm gonna break out of loop I forgot it here if you don't put in the break out of loop it just means that it is gonna go uh, every time it's gonna go through all the numbers right even if the number is one it's gonna it's gonna say okay number one is equal to one I'm gonna spawn it but then it's gonna continue and it's gonna go to unnecessary steps right so the same thing goes for spawn and find and spawn the letter because if you are, if, if you have like really long name with A's, I would just have N A A A A A A R U, it would go to all the alphabet every for every A, even though it doesn't have to, because it can find the A on first first place, and then it just breaks out of the loop and doesn't really care about the rest, right? So remember to be using break break out of loop in cases where it's needed. So yeah, that's it. And oh, sorry, we still have to call the still have to call the new update, right? So here in the delay, I'm gonna call our update, and I am gonna quickly change in this target the update board for the update that we have created right now, right? So every time I hit the target, it should update this and I can delete those 
this here we don't need them right so I'm just gonna test the game okay and as you can see we we are displaying the scores and the numbers correctly I'm just gonna equip the and if I shoot the target you can see that my score is getting up and I've already moved to second place and if I shoot again I remain the same because we have the same score but once I go up and I am the first so yeah it's all working correctly of course that uh, if you don't want to display the zeros before the actual score you would just uh, be displaying the zeros at the afterwards then you would write some if checks if the number is the first one you know if uh, if the non-zero number is the first one and then you wouldn't display it and yeah that's it I think I don't really have anything more to say about this of course that you can play with the colors for this you could you could light it up you can light up uh, the names or the first person or, or you can define a color for each of the players so if I were to create some colors for each player I would just go to a global storage where I would define a colors array and I would push some colors into this array some let's say I'm just gonna add a green color just gonna light it up a little bit so you can you know it so can glow someone's gonna be a pinkish red or well, this more like orange red I, it's it's really ugly someone's gonna be orange someone can be let's say blue yeah right so I would just create probably an instruction for this I'm just gonna name it do something because in this case we of course know what do something means so where do I have this newly created stuff do something oh is it the same do something I'm just gonna rename this new colors oh it is this do something so I have to call it on game start same as everything just to create this and then every time I create a new player with this uh, storage I'm just gonna say that he should have a random from this array right it's from the colors and yeah of course that uh, in this case if you are gonna do it like that there is a chance that someone's gonna get the same color as the player before so it would be better to delete the color from the array or at least uh, just mark it or check if someone already has that color right of course and I didn't assign the colors to the board I'm stupid right so of course then we need to change the color for that to work because I, I only assigned the colors but I never called the color so we would change this which is get a new local variable finance spawn the letter this would be here I would move this spawn entity into that and now this would be that new letter that we have created and spawned we are gonna push this and we are gonna set color one for this new letter two and we are gonna say get color player and we are oh, we would have to pass in the player as well so here oh, we can just pass in color itself right so color this color would go here and we would use this player and plug it in here to the color so it would just pass in the color and then color the entities now if we quickly test it now you can see that the names are colored differently and we didn't even have the same color which is cool and if I try this again I'm already second first everything works as it should 
and you can play with this all you want and I think that is a very cool feature for a game to have if you have some sort of a score system and some main building in which to display this so yeah this should be it for today so uh, see you next time in 14, 14 days I guess and I hope you've enjoyed this and I'm so sorry that this is gonna be such a long episode but it just takes a real long time for me to explain it and I think I guess I got a little bit distracted and messed up a few things so it took a little bit longer but I promise next time it's gonna be shorter so see you guys bye